All right, thanks so much, Thor. You're looking at the calm before the storm in Vancouver, but it's not the rain we're talking about after yesterday's washout. Another storm system is bringing potentially damaging winds to our region. At last check, around 3,000 hydro customers were in the dark due to down power lines. A wind warning has been issued for Metro Vancouver, the Fraser Valley, and most of Vancouver Island, including Greater Victoria. And if you take the Millennium Line, get ready for another possible morning of delays through Vancouver. A landslide caused flooding at VCC Clark Station. TransLink says some silt is leaking through a retaining wall. As a result, a shuttle train will be running between VCC Clark and commercial Broadway stations. On Tuesday, flooding caused problems on the Expo Line in New Westminster. We do have some localized flooding in certain areas and we expect more of that over the course of the weekend. So you'll see of some detours from time to time. Customers should give themselves some extra time. Uh, traffic will likely be slower than usual. We've advised our operators to drive more slowly when the conditions require it. And this intense weather system is causing water levels to rise. The city of Pitt Meadows has issued a high stream flow advisory. It's warning residents to stay away from river areas and use extreme caution if you're around water. An avalanche warning has been issued for recreational backcountry users along the sea to sky. It's expected to remain in effect until at least Sunday. This alert applies to anyone leaving ski resort boundaries and snowmobilers riding at or above the tree line. A 22-year-old woman has died after being struck by a bus in Burnaby. It happened around 7 o'clock on 6th Street near 16th Avenue. The intersection was blocked off overnight so police could investigate. RCMP say the woman died on scene. Few details have been released. A man has been arrested and charges have been laid after a hit-and-run death from 2016 in Vancouver. 23-year-old Amanpreet Sohal has been charged with failure to stop at an accident causing bodily harm and dangerous driving causing death. 30-year-old Ryan Barron was skateboarding with a friend on Heather Street near West 54th Avenue when he was hit. The driver drove away without stopping. Ryan died in hospital a short time later. Vancouver police call this a complex, lengthy and difficult investigation. Well, parents gathered at Vancouver's Sexsmith Elementary School for an emergency meeting last night. It comes one week after a six-year-old girl was allegedly lured off school property by a stranger and sexually assaulted. Members of the Vancouver School Board and staff attended the meeting. Police are still looking for the suspect, who is described as a man with darker skin, brown or gray hair, around 30 years old. Maybe this is not the first or last last time that it will happen. So I'm I'm really scared. During a recess lunch lunch time, there's only uh, three supervision aids during breaks, but they're not enough to look after all the kids. Well, unlicensed pot shops in Vancouver have been ordered to shut down. Isabel Regam reports. Marijuana shops are a common sight across the city of Vancouver, but thanks to a decision from a B.C. Supreme Court judge, most of them could start to disappear. The city is very pleased with the B.C. Supreme Court decision today, ordering all illegal marijuana dispensaries that were named in the suit to shut down effective immediately. Today's ruling supports injunctions filed by the city of Vancouver two years ago against 53 operations violating city rules. Some of these operators closed prior to the case being heard in court. However, remaining 28 stores that participated in the test case will now have to cease operations or face court-ordered fines, jail time, or both. It means a lot of uncertainty and a lot of fear for medical cannabis users who aren't sure where they're going to be able to get their cannabis. Some operators say they're far from putting out the joints. We're still going to keep operating as we have been. I don't really expect Vancouver to suddenly send out the police squad to start raiding dispensaries. While Kamloops is home to BC's first and only open legal pot shop, the city of Vancouver insists they won't be shutting all dispensaries. Only those 28 stores will be targeted. There are very different plans for 14 other locations. We've only received 14 applications from the province. Um, we have been informed of uh, the people who have intentions of applying, um, and we're working with the people who are trying to get in line with the new regulations, um, and we're not enforcing against them. We're really trying to help them get in line with the 
the new regulations. The 28 are those that have uh, deliberately chosen to not comply with city bylaws from day one. Those are not the applications that we're seeing. We're seeing applications primarily from those who already have sought land use approval through our regular process. I think we're going to be appealing and trying to get a better decision from another court. The city says it's too soon to know when or how it will take action, but says illegal operators should start packing. In Vancouver, Isabel Regem, City News. Well, are you feeling a little run down? You're not alone. The BC Centre for Disease Control says flu activity is increasing as we head into the holiday period. The centre says people with chronic health conditions should be vaccinated as soon as possible. It's been quite quiet, low levels of influenza up until now, but since we're starting to see it ramping up, uh, we wanted to give fair notice to people, especially those with underlying medical conditions. The center says flu complications like an ammonia can be life-threatening for many people and can even lead to death. More than 26,000 people rely on the Greater Vancouver Food Bank every week. With today being Food Bank Friday, here's how you can help. Hey, we're here on the corner of Granville and Georgia in downtown Vancouver, bright and early here on this Friday morning, all in support of the Greater Vancouver Food Bank. Want you to come down here. We're here until 6 o'clock this evening. We'll take your non-perishable food item donations. We'll take your cash donations. All of it's going to the Greater Vancouver Food Bank, such a worthwhile cause at such an important time of year. All of us from Sportsnet 650, plus our sister stations, KISS FM, Jack FM, and News 1130, wish you a happy holidays. Hope to see you here on Food Bank Friday. Well, most of the Christmas presents under the Christmas tree this year will be brand new, but one pop-up store in Vancouver has people considering giving the gift of history. This rare bookshop will be open for another week in City Square Mall. You'll find all the vintage classics, including Burns and H.G. Wells. There's also a large selection of Vancouver heritage and First Nations history. The bookseller says finding an affordable brick-and-mortar location is impossible in our city, and this is a great way to share his vast collection over the holidays. Because internet changes uh, codes and, and programs all the time. Books, if you make enough of them, a thousand books will last a thousand years, put it that way. Some will get wet, some will burn up. But if there'll still be a hundred at the end of a thousand years. So books are going to be around. Or, sure, I, Kindles are great. You cut down a few less trees, I'm okay with that. But I'm here just with a large collection in City Square Market to keep people finding some things they otherwise couldn't find very much. There's not many booksellers left in Vancouver. so. I hope I can be of service. I'm right across from City Hall for the next two weeks. 8.10, time for some celebrations. Here is Michael.